question 46 for uh, this evening and this is our concluding um, question dealing with the second commandment and again just to refresh our our memory if, we, if that needs to be done the second commandment is given to us in question 44 which is the uh, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I uh, the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments and last week we looked at what is required in the second commandment and then this week and now we will consider what is forbidden in the second commandment uh, answer the second commandment forbids the worshipping of God by images or any other way not appointed in his word so what we have here is we have the uh, the immediate application and then the the general application that flows out of that the immediate um, negative or the immediate thing that is forbidden is the worshipping of God by any type of image or idol or any representation <coughs> that is the immediate application and for, for some of us that was um, a big change because I remember as a as a child uh, going into the local Roman um, I hesitate to call it a church the local Roman temple as one of my friends would call it um, and that's a right name for it's a it's a place where you have lots of images and false gods um, and I remember bowing before these images and been taught to do so and going from one to the other for different needs and for different situations and so on and when we came to the word of God those who are raised in that religion came to the word of God to see that this is forbidden by God that was something that uh, among other things was a surprise uh, to us so that's the immediate thing we have here in the answer any worship of an idol or a graven image is forbidden and we have the the reasoning for that in Deuteronomy chapter 4 just turn there for a moment because I know we have the verses in front of us there's just one or two other verses there that I'd like to cause your call your attention to um, there are some books in the Old Testament that are more um, uh, emphasize the regulative principle Deuteronomy is one of those books uh, in the Old Testament that really deals with this um, with this issue of the regulative principle and in verse 2 of Deuteronomy 4 we read ye shall not add unto the word which I command you neither shall ye diminish or take away aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Notice there in verse 2 that it's the only way we can truly keep the commandments of God is by not adding to them or not taking away from them. As soon as we either add or take away from God's commandments we cannot keep them. That's what that verse says. Don't add, don't take away that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you then the specific verses in our answer our verses 15 and 16 take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves for ye saw no manner of similitude or likeness on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image the similitude or likeness of any figure the likeness of male or female notice at the end of verse um, 16 it's any graven image in the likeness of a man or a woman is forbidden therefore the Roman Catholic Church amongst many other religions is in breach of this uh, command and this still stands, of course. And those who, who tell us 
that this command is no longer a Roman Catholic Church say to us, well, that's, and this is, this, I've said this to you before, but it's worth repeating this. The Roman Catholic Church used exactly the same argument that many Christians today use to dismiss the fourth commandment. The Roman Catholic Church say, first of all, that's in the Old Testament, and second of all, that it's, uh, and here's, here's one of the arguments that they use. Uh, they say that in the New Testament, um, this is not forbidden. That's exactly the argument that many people use, even in the Christian, the evangelical church, to break the fourth commandment. Um, and they're right. If that's, the, if that's the argumentation, they would be right. That the New Testament never says anywhere as clear as this, you should not make graven images. The closest we have is at the end of 1 John where it says, little children, keep yourself from idols. Uh, that's the closest the New Testament gets. But it does not um, outline in these clear words what the second commandment says. So that's the immediate application. But then there's the broader application, which again really emphasizes the regulative principle, the, uh, this, uh, this regulative principle in its fullest sense, or any other way not appointed in his word. Uh, we're not to worship God by any unappointed means. We're not to bring to God anything that he has not directly commanded. And therefore we have in Colossians chapter 2 verse 18, let no man beguile you or cheat you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. In other words, bringing his own inventions into the worship of God. Let me, in closing uh, this, uh, read to you uh, a story from uh, John Whitecross's illustrations. And one story he gives is this. Whilst Sir Henry Wotton was in Italy, an ambassador of King James I at the court of Venice, he went at the request of a Roman Catholic priest to hear the music at their vespers or evening service. The priest, seeing Sir Henry stand in an obscure corner of the church, sent to him by a boy the choir this question, written on a small piece of paper. Where was your religion to be found before Luther? To which question Sir Henry presently underwrote, my religion was to be found then, where yours is not to be found now in the written word of God. And that little um, quaint story might help to um, reinforce what we have considered. So, what is forbidden in the second commandment? The second commandment forbids the worshipping of God by images or any other way not appointed in his word.